Okay, well, um, it's great to be after Greg because he's given me a lot of uh, nice context over, uh, over this uh, presentation. So I'm uh, Marneval Namas. I, um, well, I'm gonna talk to you about Sonata, which is our, our system that, that Greg already talked about. It's uh, this little board here. Um, and so the idea is that we're really going to have low-cost uh, Cherry hardware for embedded systems. So really get these in, this into the hands um, of embedded system engineers. Okay, so this is uh, what the Sunburst project, so this is the Sunburst logo. Um, and um, yeah, as I said, uh, we mainly want to get um, this into the hands of uh, embedded systems engineers. And part of this is uh, we're gonna make two boards. So this is the first board, uh, the Sonata board, which is a low cost system. And then we're also gonna make a symphony board later this year. Um, that is a more, uh, what I would say, realistic system. So a realistic embedded system, but also is, is a bit more expensive. Um, <clears throat> but this talk, I will focus mostly on the Sonata system. So here's a picture of the uh, schematic of the board. Um, so as you can see, there's multiple headers on here um, for ease of development. We have a Raspberry Pi header on the top there, um, Arduino Shield, Microbus Click, et cetera. And the, really the idea is that uh, we can make a, um, a board that's as easy to use as possible. So one example of this is you have uh, a little USB on the side there and we wanna make sure that you can just plug one cable into your PC, it provides the power to the board, but you can also program the FPGA over that, um, and also uh, you can get a UR terminal. So it's really providing, providing systems with a, the, the least hassle as possible. Now, why is uh, low risk the right place to be? So um, the right company to actually do this project, uh, well, Greg already, um, gave an example, we, 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 are, uh, we have been driving the Open Titan project, but also um, the Silicon Commons. And so we really believe that um, we can provide the kind of IP and the kind of um, silicon and hardware design necessary to make this open source platform a success. The other thing I would like to mention is that we recently acquired uh, New AE, which is a, a Canadian technology company, and they're uh, very well known for their chip whisperer boards, and they have a lot of experience making PCBs, making sure that there's support and training material available. Um, so uh, making boards like these and making the training available, that's really their bread and butter. So we're really happy that they are uh, along with us uh, to support that. Um, at the end of the presentation, there will be a, um, a link to a handout, and there's lots of um, links and stuff that I've put in the notes in case you want to uh, learn more about uh, any of that. But let's uh, talk a little bit about Cherry itself. Uh, so Cherry really is, uh, is, is, it stands for Capability Hardware Enhanced Risk Instructions, and it really is trying to address uh, the memory uh, safety vulnerabilities that you see in many unsafe languages like C and C++. So with C and C++, usually a uh, pointer is the same as an integer, so you can manipulate it in any way and get pretty much to anywhere in memory. Um, so what, what you do in Cherry is you add, uh, besides the address, you add some metadata. Um, part of that metadata is the bounds, which gives you a base and a top, so you can't actually go beyond that piece of memory. Um, and then there's also permissions which tell you, for example, you can only write to this piece of memory, you can only read from this piece of memory, or you can execute from this piece of memory. So if you ever give a function a, a, a pointer and say, okay, you can read and write to this array, you'll never have a case where that, pro that function accidentally, either through a bug or through an active attack, accidentally executes that. You'll, your your uh, CPU will um, uh, stop that immediately. There's also something that's not on this slide. There's a validity tag, which is an out-of-band bit. That's pretty much a tag that the hardware controls, and it, it says whether this piece of memory is an actual capability, as you see here, or it's just an integer. So you can never um, confuse yourself 
saying like, oh, I'm just going to use this integer as a capability. That doesn't exist. Your hardware will, uh, will stop you from doing that. So why should we care? That's a good question, because we have this nice little hardware thing that, that does our security, but is it actually worth something? Um, so I'll, I'll give this is a, a screenshot of a, a paper made by the um, Microsoft Security Response Center. And what they did is they uh, looked at all the vulnerabilities that they uh, responded to in 2019 and determined that Cherry would uh, mitigate at least two-thirds of those vulnerabilities. So that means that they could deterministically, if Cherry was deployed on all their systems, it would have, um, in, on day one, it would remove two-thirds of them at least two thirds of them, because there's, there's also ones that you might have detected later on, but they couldn't kind of prove it. Um, so that's huge. So this is a huge security win, but not just that, it's also a huge economic win, right? Like there's so much money going into these really big companies having to respond to all these uh, vulnerabilities, um, having to ship all these patches, and this is especially true in embedded systems where it's very difficult to do these updates. So I think that's, that's a good thing to think about, right? The economic benefits of uh, just deploying a technology like this. And um, again, in the handout, there's a link to this, um, to this uh, paper where you can read more of the details. Um, then uh, Chariot, so uh, Greg mentioned it earlier. Um, I won't go into details about Chariot, but Chariot is essentially taking Chariot and making it work for embedded systems. Um, tomorrow, there's a talk by David Chisnell. I encourage everybody who's interested in Chariot and learning more of the details to go to his talk. It's in the uh, security track. And essentially, he talks about how, how to make ch um, changes to Cherry to make it work for embedded systems, but also to focus on compartmentalization and to make sure that you have temporal safety as well. And by temporal safety, so I talked a little bit about doing things like out of bounds and, and uh, permissions. There's also a whole other story about how do you, use, how do you solve use after free uh, memory vulnerabilities. And there's also an answer to that. Um, but please go along to this talk if you want to learn more about that. So why are we doing this? Um, so we think Cherry has the potential to really get into uh, deployment. But to get to that, you really have to go through the technology readiness levels. So there's been more than a decade of research done at the University of Cambridge and SRI International, which is really in the research phase, which is one, two, one th through three. And lately, in the last few years, there's also been a lot of work on the de development side. So one example is ARM published ARM Morello, which is a, a Cherry modification of the ARM ISA, and they've also shipped some development boards. And we believe that um, with Sonata, we can really bring a lot of those benefits into the open source. So we want to create an open source platform, an open source um, board, but also software, verification, et cetera, and really push this um, from the development stages into the deployment stages. So that's what we hope for um, both uh, Sonata and eventually Symfony. Okay, why embedded? So a lot of the uh, work that's been done by uh, the University of Cambridge, sorry, uh, was uh, focusing on application class processors. So that's really a, a quite difficult area to be in when you're making um, when you're making uh, changes uh, to the hardware architecture because you have to work with all existing operating systems, you have to work with all modern compilers, um, you have to think that if you're working on an application class processor, you need to support um, third, class, uh, third party applications, uh, which can be compiled with any compiler, so you can't just say like, I need all my applications to be now compiled to be pure capability, that's just not a thing. Uh, so you have to make sure that you have a hybrid mode and be as compatible as possible. So they've done a lot of research and they've shown that Cherry can work in this environment. 
What we think is that Cherry might actually benefit from being deployed in uh, the embedded systems in the first instance because you have much more control over your hardware, you have much more control over the software that you run, and so you can actually just say, okay, I have all this software, I'll just compile it with this compiler that gives me Cherry capabilities and I don't have to add all these extra features that are power hungry and might be a problem inside my embedded system. And so that's why we are aiming to enable Cherry deployment in the embedded world. Okay, so a little bit more details about Sonata. So this is a, a simple block diagram. Um, so as um, Greg mentioned, we have the Chariot Ibex, which um, Microsoft released. Um, and so we are building this kind of uh, system around that. So we have a big bus um, that's a TyLink bus that we, we also use in the Open Titan project. And then there's a lot of these kind of IPs that we're adding to it, uh, mainly to make this a platform that's usable, right? And we're really uh, working on the Silicon Commons idea where we're trying to reuse as much of our IP as possible. So many of these blocks are actually blocks that we will um, take from Open Titan and use in this system. And um, the other thing that I would like to highlight is the pin multiplexer. So we really want this to be as configurable as possible. Um, so from the software, for example, you can say, oh, I want this LED to be powered on or driven by my pulse width modulator to, make, to, to be able to dim it instead of the GPIO. That's one example. The other thing is that we have a configurable amount of I squared C, SBI, and UART devices. And again, with the pin multiplexer, you can put those onto different pins as you wish. So for example, some of these, uh, the Raspberry Pi header has some I squared C devices, so you can put your I squared C on it. But for some other application, you might want to drive it through the GPIO. So all of that should be possible, and you don't have to reflash um, your bitstream onto your FPGA. So as I said, um, we have lots of kind of connection devices. Um, and by device, I mean, I mean hardware IP blocks. Um, so it's really important for embedded system to be able to connect to as many of these uh, protocols as possible. So I squared C, inter-integrated circuit, SPI, um, serial peripheral interface, um, et cetera. So uh, we're really trying to connect to as many things as possible. And then on top of that, um, as I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of extendable headers. So in case you have some niche application, um, excuse me, there's a touch screen. <laughs> um, in, in case you have a niche, niche use, ca use case that we hadn't thought of when we were making the board, you can always buy an off-the-shelf um, extendable header like a Raspberry Pi hat, an Arduino Shield, Microbus Click. Those are all on the top of the board. Um, Sparkfunk Quick is this thing where you can kind of chain, daisy chain together boards. It uses the I squared C interface. Um, so we have two uh, connectors on the side so you can actually daisy chain some boards together. And then on the bottom of the device we have uh, two P mods and an RS-232 and RS-485. Okay. And now from um, how, where does this bring us from like a bigger perspective, right? So we believe that Cherry as a whole has actually benefited a lot from the open source ecosystem already. So we have uh, the LLVM and FreeBSD work that's been done uh, at the University of Cambridge. They've benefited from those projects being open source and for on the software side. And then in the middle, we have these instruction set architectures, uh, RISC-V. Uh, but also the Cherry ISA itself, and on top of that we have the Microsoft Chariot, which is also an instruction set architecture. And then they've also benefited from using our IBEX core, which is also open source. So all of these things kind of feed in um, into an open source loop, and that's why uh, we hope that Sonata will become that open source platform that kind of brings all these things together uh, for the embedded systems and make sure that we can propel Cherry forward in the next step of uh, commercialization and, and uh, deployment. And there's a lot of kind of uh, technical reports and stuff like uh, references to open source ISAs, uh, compilers, et cetera. 
And those links are, are in the handout that you can find um, at the end of my presentation. So, I showed a picture of this. Um, obviously, it's much nicer to see the actual board. Uh, so these are, this is a uh, prototype board. We um, will create, uh, we'll, 100, 100 of these will be available freely, so we'll distribute those together with our UKRI partners. Um, yeah, and, and on top of that, it's, it'll also be commercially available, so if anybody um, can't get one of the 100 free boards, um, you will be able to find this uh, later on. Um, yeah, and as you can see, like it's already running, <laughs> telling me to take a break. Skip break. I have too many papers on my laptop, so I can't actually click this. There we go. Um, so yeah, we have 100 free boards that will be available. Um, and as I, I just showed you, um, a lot of this, all of this stuff is open source. So we have the design, um, the verification, and the documentation are all available on the Sonata system GitHub repo. Uh, the software is open source, and the board layout is on a separate re repository, uh, but all of that is uh, provided by NewAE and is also available. And I uh, got, uh, when, when I went to the open radio talk, I was inspired and, and I thought I'd put up a schematic of it. This is, this is how the RP2040 is connected on our, on our board. Um, obviously, you don't have to read this, but all of this uh, is available online and you can go manufacture a, one of these boards yourself if you really wish to. So as I promised, uh, there's a QR code for the handout. You should also be able to find this on um, the SCED app or the schedule app. Uh, feel free to send me an email if you have any questions about this. Um, we also have regular uh, technical interest group meetings uh, for Sunburst, so please do come along if you're interested in that, uh, and we have a website uh, for more information. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I, I think I'm doing okay <laughs> on time. Um, yeah, happy to uh, take any questions. Um,